Welcome back. This time we're talking about King Arthur Legend of the Sword, the latest film from director Guy Ritchie. Now, if you're familiar with Ritchie's previous works, you know he brings a very distinct style to his movies. I enjoyed his Sherlock Holmes movies, albeit the first more so than the second, as well as his adaptation of The Man from Uncle, although I might be in the minority on that case. So when I heard he was making a King Arthur film, I was intrigued and curious what he would bring to the sort of sword and sorcery genre. And then when I saw the first trailer, my initial reaction was, that's pretty much what I was expecting from a Guy Ritchie King Arthur film. And now having seen the movie, I can say my reaction is once again, that's pretty much exactly what I was expecting from a Guy Ritchie King Arthur film. And I have to say, I enjoyed it because I enjoy that style he brings to movies. Um, with that being said, I am aware of the fact that that style does not turn on everyone else. So it really will come down to how much you enjoyed his previous movies. If you liked his Sherlock Holmes movies and you liked his The Man From U.N.C.L.E., I really think you're going to find a lot to enjoy here because a lot of the same filmmaking techniques that just Guy Ritchie style is infused in pretty much every moment of this movie from the camera angles to the way the film is told through a lot of non time linear um, edits where we see things and then cut back to how we got there. He does that a lot, and it's a style, like I said, I enjoy. So I went in thinking I was going to enjoy this movie, and I did. Um, but if you're not a fan of Guy Ritchie's other movies, this is one you probably want to skip, because I don't think there's anything here that's going to convert you to, into being a fan unless you're just a big King Arthur fan and want to give him another a try. Now, as far as the story goes, this is a very non-traditional telling of King Arthur. Um, we have some of the same characters, at least they have the same names, but the general story is quite different. Um, in this case, um, the film begins with King Arthur's father, played by Eric Bana, um, battling against the evil uh, mage Mordred. And as we're told that there's sort of these two almost separate races. You have humanity and then you have the mages. And there's this climactic battle, which ultimately results in the king's brother betraying everyone and stealing the throne. Arthur, who is a very young boy at this point, is um, placed in a boat and basically floats down the river to Londinium, um, basically this era's version of London, where he is found by a number of women who work in a brothel, and he is raised there and becoming sort of a street gangster type character where he um, protects his friends and kind of rules the streets and makes sure nothing too horrible happens. Meanwhile, the new king, played by Jude Law, is attempting to cement his reign, and to do that, he needs to find and eliminate the true heir to the throne, namely Arthur, who is played by Charlie Hunnam, who is best known for his role on Sons of Anarchy. So Arthur, who would probably be very content to just continue living his life as this um, protector of the streets, for the lack of a better description, gets finds himself pulled into this um, regal struggle and has to decide if he wants to take on this charge. And that's essentially this movie. It's, again, uh, for me, I really enjoyed it. I like Guy Ritchie's style, and as I said earlier, that's really going to be the determining factor for, for if you like this movie or not. Um, I really didn't have many complaints outside of the style things, which, for again, for me was not a complaint. Um, I will say there's a section in the middle where the pacing gets a little wonky. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but suffice it to say, Arthur kind of goes on this, like, spirit quest. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. And we only get glimpses of it. And honestly, that whole spirit quest probably could have been expanded into its own movie. It felt almost epic in what was happening. But we only ever get little glimpses of it. So we feel like we're, we're missing a lot of very interesting things happening. Um, but I can accept it because I, 
if it, they had really extended a, that out more, it would have hurt the film's overall pacing. So I don't really have a problem with that, but it did feel a little weird as it was happening. Um, more importantly, however, right after that, and again, I'm, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, um, but we're reintroduced to some characters that we had known earlier who, as far as we know, are not part of the group that we're following. And suddenly they're there. And their presence and how they got there is never really explained. So it really felt like we were missing a scene. Like there was some kind of, oh, hey, we're, we're here, hi, kind of moment. And we never get that. And the film instead just... Um, wants us to accept that oh they're here and it was a little jarring because this it overall does have a pretty large cast and trying to keep everyone straight uh, especially when we're going from you know, like one group to another group to another group trying to keep them all straight it's a little difficult so when they threw that at us i was like they could have handled that better um my guess is is that there was a scene that reintroduce those characters that ultimately just didn't make it into the final cut and i i would have preferred that back in there um but other than that uh, i really didn't have much to, to complain about is it crazy and weird and outlandish absolutely but it fits this style of movie so i i'm, I'm not going to call it a complaint um again i've said it multiple times i'll say it one more time um, this is a very, very stylized movie. Um, if you like Guy Ritchie's films, um, especially his Sherlock Holmes films, uh, maybe not so much um, The Man from Uncle, but if you like his previous movies, I think you're going to enjoy this one. If you did not, I don't think you will. Um, like I said, the, the, the style is so in your face in this movie that it... I think takes precedent over anything else and any other consideration and is going to be the determining factor, the primary primary determining factor on whether you end up liking this movie. As I said, I am and I did. So um, that that's the best way I can describe this movie. Now, if you've seen King Arthur Legend of the Sword, what did you think about it? And did you enjoy it? Or did you not? And how did that correspond to how much you enjoyed Guy Ritchie's earlier movies? Did it line up as much as I'm thinking it will? Um, as always, you can subscribe to my channel. Check out some other reviews. And until next time, I'll see you at the movies.